The basic casting of the shooting head, which we'll be looking at now, is not much different than casting a weight forward line. But there are a lot of tips and tricks involved that makes life a little bit easier for the fly fisherman. To show you some of these tricks and tips, we've come out to a beach in Denmark where we usually fish for sea trout. That's a kind of fishery where it's about covering as much water as possible, as easily as possible. You will see the odd fish rise and you will be able to cast to it, hopefully catch some as well. But generally, the more water you can cover, the more likely you are to succeed in catching a sea trout. As I said, casting the shooting head is not much different than casting the weight forward line. But it is a different line system. Now, at, at the fish end, at the hook end, there is of course a leader, as in any fly line. The shooting head itself is this thick orange line, which on the back end, via a loop-to-loop -loop system, is coupled to, in this case, a thin monofilament shooting line. The shooting head itself can be floating or sinking or intermediate. And of course, it can be many different lengths and weights. The length will be according to where you're fishing. If you have restricted back cast room, you can use a short shooting head. If you have lots of space, and particularly as now, it's very calm, a longer shooting head is an advantage. Um, and of course, the weight of the shooting head should correspond to the weight of the rod you're using. In this case, I'm using a six weight rod and the shooting head weighs 14 grams and it's 10 and a half meters long. You may have noticed this green tray on my back, which is a line tray. The line tray has, in my view, a lot of advantages. It's of course meant for keeping the line in when you're fishing. Uh, it has these little cones, which prevents the line from tangling. And it does add a little bit of length to your cast because the line coming off the tray doesn't have the same resistance as if it was coming off from the water. But another very clear advantage is if there's a current, you don't risk the line getting washed downstream. And you also have the ability to move between casts and not risk catching your line in seaweed and other things floating around in the surface. Another good way of using the line tray. Most line trays have these notches, which you can place your rod in if you need to change the fly or let's say that you had a wind knot. Then you won't risk the line washing away as you spend time either changing the fly or untangling your fly line. And you have both your hands free because the rod rests securely in these notches. When you're ready to begin fishing, it's important that you put the line into the tray in the reverse order that it goes out, so to speak. So to begin with, I simply strip the line off the reel, letting it fall onto the water. Strip off the line that I find that I'll be needing. You can stretch your shooting line before you put it into the tray. This is quickly done with a monofilament line like this one. Take your time, stretch the line. This will avoid tangles later on. And when I get to the joint between the shooting head and the shooting line, I simply grab my line and begin fishing. Now the story behind the name, the shooting head, is of course that in order to gain distance, you will need to shoot a lot of line. As I said earlier, the shooting head itself is no more than 10 and a half meters. So if I don't shoot line, I will only have the shooting head itself and the length of the leader, which in this case is nine feet. So in order to gain more distance, I need to shoot line. When I'm fishing the shooting head, I usually stop here as I feel the joint between 
the shooting head and the shooting line in my fingers. Then I slowly raise the rod, still fishing the fly. And as I come back into what is ideally a good position for a roll cast, I will usually be able to tell if there's a fish following the fly. If not, I simply make a roll cast into the air and with a few false casts, I have the shooting head out and ready to cast again. Now there's one more thing, one more key point, and that's the timing with which you release your line in your final delivery. If you release too late, nothing bad will happen as such, but you will lose distance like this. I'm hanging on, releasing too late, and only shooting three or four meters of fly line. Now, this case was of course exaggerated, but if you release at the right time, which is just as your haul finishes, the double haul finishes, you will gain a lot more distance with the same line speed. And of course, releasing too soon is, a, is an even bigger problem because you won't be able to form a proper loop in your cast like this. This will simply happen. So learning to time the release is quite essential if you want to get the very best out of your shooting head system. When casting the shooting head, you have to pay a little bit of attention to this joint between the thick shooting head and the thin shooting line. Because if you get too much of this thin shooting line outside of your rod tip, you will lose control of your cast. As casting instructors, we call it overhang, the amount of shooting line that you have outside of your rod tip. If you have too much shooting line outside your rod tip, you will lose control or you will have to use an unnecessary amount of energy to keep the cast under control. Let me try and show you what it looks like. Now I have this approximately a meter or three feet of shooting line and I have pretty good control of the cast and the line. Now I'll try and extend the shooting line to the point where I lose control of the cast. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now I'm simply slowly extending the shooting line. And you will see that already there the cast collapses completely. And I have here what amounts to a rod length of shooting line. And that is simply too much. I can keep it under control, but I will have to use an unnecessary amount of energy. So pay attention to the amount of overhang outside your rod tip. That will greatly improve your casting with the shooting head system. When you're casting and fishing the shooting head, which is often a relatively short line that you're carrying in the air, as you can see, this shooting head I can carry with a very short, compact casting stroke. But when I'm going to make my delivery, if I use this same very short, compact casting stroke, I'll often end up with a tailing loop. If you instead, before your final delivery, think of the drift and then stop, drift and then come forward. Then you're actually opening your casting stroke up a little bit to accommodate for the deeper bend in the rod when you make your final delivery, which will often be a harder cast and bend the rod more. <laughs> 